Hey guys, my name is Max, and welcome to Simple Biology. Today we're going to be talking about cell signaling, which, of course, is the is the way in which different cells can communicate with each other in, or send signals to each other. This uh, this process is present even in single-celled organisms, but as you might expect, it becomes incredibly important as you get larger and larger uh, organisms with more and more cells and that it needs to coordinate different actions between all these different cells. Thus, the communication between those cells, like I said, is incredibly important. So that's why we're going to be studying that. Now, as we start talking about cell signaling, uh, we're just going to go through each of the different phases or stages of that cell signaling, um, just one by one, so you can get a good, good picture of that. So first, we're going to start with the production of the cell signal. And uh, before that, we're going to have to uh, identify a few terms and what they mean. First off, whenever we talk about hormones, that's really just any chemical messenger. So it's uh, a hormone will be released into maybe the bloodstream or just the, the environment outside of the cell in order to communicate with the other cells. As you can probably tell, almost all of cell signaling is going to rely on these hormones. Now, when you uh, another word for cell signaling, especially when it involves hormone, is what's called endocrine signaling. And um, you may have heard of your endocrine system in your body, which utilizes those hormones for cell signaling, and that's exactly what this is. Endocrine signaling just uses those hormones as messengers. Now, in addition to this, um, you can have endocrine signaling that's very local. So uh, maybe one cell will act on the another cell right next to it. And so that local endocrine signaling has a special name, and that's, and that's uh, paracrine signaling. Para means like next to or beside. And so you can kind of see in, this diagram, in these diagrams, um, these are three organs in your body, the liver, the pancreas, and a muscle. And uh, at, certain points, at certain points of time, the pancreas will release what's known as insulin. And so that's what all these blue dots are. And this insulin will travel throughout the body and act on trillions of cells, but uh, specifically uh, are the ones that are, that are in the liver and some that are in all of your muscle cells. Um, there are various effects of this. We're not going to get into them right now, but insulin is one of those hormones that travels throughout your blood. And so that, uh, that's a hormone that is involved in cell signaling. Uh, another one, this is just a simplified diagram of a cell that releases a, uh, a hormone and participates in paracrine signaling with this other cell that's right next to it. In addition, there's a special type of signaling that is going to be, uh, be even more prevalent in humans and in animals, uh, all animals, and which is uh, signaling between nerve cells. And so nerve cells communicate uh, with both electric impulses and neurotransmitters. A neurotransmitter is just a special type of hormone that acts in nerve, uh, nerve cells. Neuro is for nerve transmitter, uh, just like a, a signal or a hormone. And um, in addition to all this, all these hormones that we're talking about, are, uh, there are various kinds of them, but a lot of them are produced in just the same way, same processes that we've talked about. Either it's a, it's a protein that's being produced by, um, by transcription and translation, or it's uh, some other compound that's being formed through a metabolic pathway involving a bunch of enzymes. But it's nothing new, it's just, an, um, it's just hormones, they are, and they're being released by the cells. Uh, the next phase, and probably the most important phase, is what's, is what's known as reception. Now, reception is the way that the cell that's getting the signal is going to um, is going to receive it and distinguish it from all the other signals it's receiving. So uh, the first two types of reception we're going to talk about are intracellular receptors and G protein coupled receptors. So intracellular receptors um, are just what they seem. It's a it's a receptor that's inside the cell, and what will happen is that these will use small hydrophobic molecules as their signals. So uh, maybe you have a steroid hormone. Which is uh, which is a carbohydrate or a hydrocarbon that is uh, very nonpolar and can pa and is hydrophobic, and because of this, it can pass easily through that membrane. So there are various kinds of there are various of these hormones, um, but they will, they can easily pass through the membrane and activate that receptor right there in the cytoplasm. The other kind I mentioned is G protein couple receptors. And the reason they're, uh, they're called G-protein coupled receptors is because they involve what's known as G-proteins. And uh, here's this other diagram. Uh, 
it looks pretty it looks kind of complicated it involves several different proteins but essentially you have this purple G protein coupled receptor which is activated by the red signaling molecule and in turn activates the G protein now the G protein uh, there is it's called a G protein because it hydrolyzes what's known as GTP which is very similar to ATP uh, just a small uh, just, just a small difference that's not very important uh, but it's, it, it can be helpful to know once that G protein hydrolyzes that it, it, it is it becomes phosphorylated and that activates the G protein the G protein will then go over to this enzyme uh, which is often embedded in the in the membrane it will then activate that enzyme and allow it to uh, perform its function in sending the signal signal further into the cell the next two types of, uh, of, of cell receptors are what are known as receptor tyrosine kinases and ion channel receptors now receptor tyrosine kinases again it sounds uh, sounds pretty uh, pretty difficult but I'm going to break this down to you. It's a receptor. That's pretty self-explanatory. It receives the signal uh, and it does something from there. Tyrosine is an amino acid that can become phosphorylated, which is important to its function. And a kinase is any protein that acts as an enzyme in order to phosphorylate another protein. So a receptor uh, tyrosine kinase uses tyrosine and receives signals and uh, phosphorylates other proteins. Essentially what they do is they form dimers with each other and um, it's important to know that they can activate multiple pathways, not just one. So these are what those uh, receptor tyrosine kinases look like. Each one of the, these is a receptor, separate receptor tyrosine kinase. And uh, when they're activated by their signaling molecules, they will actually, um, they will actually catalyze each other's reactions in order to phosphorylate, for, phosphorylate each of these tyrosines on on their uh, on the protein. Once these tyrosines are phosphorylated by one ATP each, uh, that activates a region of the receptor tyrosine kinase, which can then ph uh, phosphorylate one of these relay proteins. Now, the interesting thing about these, like I mentioned, is that they can activate multiple pathways. They can activate many different relay proteins. Oftentimes, these uh, receptor tyrosine kinases can have eight to ten. Uh, tyrosines, not just three like you ha I have in this diagram. So um, obviously that can lead to many different uh, functions being uh, going on in the cell uh, rather than just one like uh, like we have with those other two receptors that I mentioned. Next up we have our ion channel receptors and this one is uh, very self-explanatory they just open ion channels, that's all they do. So essentially, it's an ion channel. That's it's a gated ion channel, uh, which can be opened when uh, when it receives a signal from the signaling molecule. When this become when this opens, it often it will often allow a very sharp uh, uh, increase or drop in the concentration of a certain ion. Oftentimes, these will use a calcium ion. Uh, which is especially important in cell signaling. We'll get into the, into calcium's role in a minute, but uh, essentially, ion, ion channel receptors open ion channels. That's all it is. So now that we've talked about cell signaling and how it's received by the cell, uh, it's time to go on into how, what the cell actually does with the signal and how it inter interacts with different proteins within the cell. And so this phase of the cell of cell signaling is known as transduction. I have in these diagrams uh, a couple examples of how transduction will occur and as you can see this, the cell signal will actually go through several different proteins before actually initiating a response and so as it goes through each of these proteins the response or the uh, the signal is fine-tuned to just what the cell needs to do and so that's going to be important when we talk about this many of these proteins are regulated by what's known as phosphorylation I've mentioned this before, but phosphorylation is essentially uh, when a phosphate is attached to a protein. And so each of these and each of these proteins will act as enzymes in order to uh, phosphorylate each each of the next uh, proteins in the in the line. And as it do, as they do so, the protein that's being phosphorylated will change shape just slightly, but that's enough to make it uh, to activate it and make it so that it can uh, perform its function and activate the next protein in the pathway.
because of the essential role of phosphorylation in this process, uh, that pathway is known as the phosphorylation cascade. Uh, in addition, that, that signal is terminated or ended whenever what's a uh, protein that's known as a protein phosphorylase uh, takes away the phosphate. A protein phosphorylate will catalyze uh, the hydrolysis of uh, the protein and the phosphate into separate things. So when the protein phosphorylase gets around to that, uh, that signal will end. Different pathways can, uh, can interact with each other or split into, different, into two separate responses. As you can see in, uh, in these two diagrams, uh, this, um, this essential protein right here will actually interact with two different proteins in order to play two separate functions within the cell. In this other diagram, two different uh, signals, two different, um, two, yeah, two different signals will interact with each other in order to only influence one, uh, one reaction, one function in the cell. And because of this, uh, this is what you, the cell can fine-tune the response, like I mentioned earlier. In addition to this, <laughs> the pathways can be amplified at each step. Now, I've, um, I've mentioned that the, pro the proteins are phosphorylated, and that phosphate is taken away by the protein uh, phosphatase. But before the protein phosphatase gets to it, that protein will, act will interact with more than just one other protein. It can react with uh, dozens of other proteins in some cases, but um, as it does so, that activates many more proteins than it was. So it's multiplying that signal by that many times. Because of this, um, that allows a single signaling molecule to react uh, to make uh, sometimes billions of other, of, um, of of molecules change in response to it. The last thing we're going to mention in transduction is what's known as a second messenger. Now, if you remember in the last slide, I talked about calcium. Calcium is one example of a second messenger, and essentially second messengers are small molecules or ions that will relay the signal. And so rather than the signal being relayed, relayed by a protein, they'll be re relayed by something much smaller and uh, not made out of amino, amino acids. Another great example of a second messenger is cyclic AMP, which is a, another form of ATP. It's made uh, through a couple of reactions from ATP, but uh, cyclic AMP, and it's, uh, it's short abbreviated to CAMP, if you ever see that on a test. And so these two second messengers I've talked about, CAMP, CAMP and calcium ion, those are the two uh, most important second messengers in the cell. And because they're so ready, readily available, and because they're so abundant in the cell, uh, it's very easy for the cell to get a hold of them, and it, it can amplify the signal w much, much more.